Hello, hello, and welcome again to another Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show in which we talk about what's going on news-wise in the world of the Beatles. I'm Ken Michaels. I'm one of the co-hosts of the show, being joined by my co-host on the West Coast, and that being Steve Marinucci, who writes for Beatles Examiner. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. On today's show, we have with us on the phone... For a brief time, he's going to pay us a short visit. Mark Lapidos is back with us. He's the organizer of the Fest for Beatle Fans. He's been working on that for the last 40 years, and he's got yet but another one in store, which, uh, well, the next one is the Chicago Fest for Beatle Fans, which happens August the 15th through the 17th in Chicago at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare. So we welcome Mark back to the show. Hi, Mark. Good evening, Ken. Good evening, Steve. Nice to talk to both of you again. Uh, sorry, I can't keep, be a little bit longer, but I just uh, we just have deadlines that have to be met. I want everybody at the fest to have their program books when they arrive. Oh boy, yes. And that's usually printing deadlines. You can't be late on those, as I'm sure you know. So, how are you guys doing? What do we got? What kind of questions do you want me to? Do you want to tell you about the fest? What exciting stuff we have to talk about? Yeah, but before you do that, I just have one very basic question to ask you because. Yes. I've always been at the one in, in New Jersey all these years, mm-hmm. um, and the ones in New York, the few ones in New York. But people always say to me, there's nothing like the Chicago Fest. Some people actually prefer that over the one in New Jersey. What are the differences, if any, between both fests? Um, well, one thing, the hotel in Chicago is really perfect for us. It's big, it's modern, it's beautiful, there's plenty of space, and it just has a, 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 a lot more area than the Jersey Hotel has for people to uh, sit around and play music. Uh, also, you know, Midwest fans, they, they're different than the East Coast and West Coast, although I haven't been to the West Coast in 14 years. But they seem to, Chicago, they just seem to let it all hang out. They know they're surrounded by, by friends, and it's like a reunion every year. And there's less, let me call them hang-ups, less self-awareness uh, of what, how they're acting it's just they just want to they're just fans for the weekend and this is their their weekend away from from their home and their rest of their lives and they love it and they come every year it's not that it's not that way in new york but it just seems to be more uh laid back Mm -hmm. in the middle of the country which i guess we would probably expect well i could go for more laid back Although Steve and I, I'm to Chicago. <laughs> if Steve and I were any more laid back, we'd be in we'd be in trouble. Steve got a question. <laughs> Mark, how long does uh, how long does this particular fest take to get together? And in other words, how long have you been working on this? And has it been any more difficult this year with the 50th anniversary? Well, one, my goal, which I think I succeeded, Ken, you were there, in New York was to make it the biggest and best show ever. Mm -hmm. And after the show, I counted, we had 35 guests, which was almost unmanageable. But the show ran smoothly, and it was great, and I'm glad I did it in New York City where we started. Uh, Chicago, I wanted to have a lot of headliners at one show to make it to continue the 50th anniversary celebration. Call this part two, and LA will be part three. So, to have Peter Noon and Mickey Dolans on the stage, they've they've both been in Jersey the last one last year, one two years ago. Mike Pender from the Searchers never had any members of the Searchers at the fest, so this is his first time ever at a fest, and uh, he has a lot of great stories. And Billy J. Kramer told me that he, you're going to love, we're going to love him, the fans are going to love him. He's he really tells story great. So, between Mickey and Peter, who are we know are fabulous storytellers. And on top of that, we have Lawrence Juber, the best guitarist that we know, mm-hmm. doing concerts here today from Wings, uh, adding Mark Rivera. The horn, you know, people listen know who he is. We don't have to tell them who he is. He's Ringo's musical director, and he's got a new CD out. Have you guys heard it yet? It's oh, really yeah. good. Yeah, we had Mark yes, in the uh, cutting room. Ken, you were at the cutting room then, I sure you? was. Yeah, we've had yeah, Mark we've had as a guest show. here on our show. And also on my show, so yeah, it's a fantastic yeah, he's, album. He's really, I was very impressed, and his first time as a frontman is really good. And uh, I believe he and Liverpool are trying to work out a number, the number that Ringo works, uh, 
is on on the on the CD common bond. So mm. that should be good. Plus, of course, we have Mark Hudson and over twenty authors, including one of our headliners for the week, Mark Lewison. Yay! <laughs> uh, we're so glad he'd come to Chicago again. Obviously, his book is uh, is the second Bible of, of Beatle books. He, he wrote the first one a long time ago, the recording sessions. And it's some for some reason, maybe it's the 50th year, guys, that uh, all these books are coming out. But there's a lot of terrific books mm-hmm. all in one year. I don't know how you guys keep up. I I can't read them all. I, I'm not that fast a reader, and with with Mark's book weighing in at uh, well, over 800, almost 900 pages, and Jude's book is over 700 pages, and uh, Chuck Gunderson's book is what five six hundred pages. Yeah, there's a lot of. Re- and the Beetle Encyclopedia just came out. It's 1,200 pages by Ken Womack. Yeah. So do you? There's a lot of serious for people who are retired. <laughs> it's it's perfect. But for yeah. people who are working, there's a lot of Beatle information out there, and it's, you know, I'd, I'd like to get to all of it. And uh, I'm reading as best as I can. Yeah, and in, in the last year or so, there's just been an onslaught of so many really great books, and and we've been grateful yeah. that we've interviewed a lot of the authors here on this show. Vivek Tiwari, of all, he's. You, have you had him on your show yet? Not yet. No. I've interviewed Vivek. He's wonderful. He's a wonderful guy. The guy's won Tony Awards. The movie mm-hmm. is being made into a, it's being made into a feature movie about mm-hmm. Brian, and and the guy's doing it. It's an Academy Award winner for Best Picture. Hmm. Was it right. American Beauty about ten years ago? I mean, he's worked with just the top people in the industry. Yeah, he's the nicest guy. Everybody loves him. He just hangs around, talks to everybody, signs autographs, and just is there. Doesn't disappear. He's there the whole time. And, He's a real nice guy, so we're looking forward to all those people and all the people who are coming in from over 30 states now and Canada. I know we've got people from England and Spain. I think I saw someone coming from Norway. Or maybe that's for L.A. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's an international audience again, and uh, it's only two weeks. It's the weekend of August 15th, and it's going to be a, a great one. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, um, since you've been doing this now for 40 years, I've always noticed that there's a wide age group that comes to the fest. And I wanted to know, has there been any changes that you've noticed as far as the age demographic? Are there more teens and 20-year-olds now than other age groups? Or would you say that the baby boomers still take up most of uh, your audience there? What's still the What's the biggest think, demographic that you have? <laughs> I think there's as many uh, second and third generations as first generation. We get a lot of young people. Look, we have uh, Beatles puppet shows and a Beatles parade and kids' corner in the art museum, kids' trivia, kids' yoga, kids' name that tune. So we have a lot of things going on for the young people, and parents want to bring their kids. They, they come up to me and say, you know, it's, it's my dream to have a kid who likes the Beatles. And they start, and they turn them on to the Beatles early, and uh, the kids who have good ears come to the fest and, and become Beatles fans. And thankfully, a lot of them have good yep, ears. Of course. I mean, it's the music that grabs them, right? I mean, I, I've said this in the last couple of years. I'm jealous of young people, because we will, can never hear a new Beatles album ever again, of new music. Whereas a, a, an 8-year-old or a 10-year-old or even a, a teenager who may have heard 20 Beatles songs, if they're just casual fans, can put on, let's say, Revolver, and besides Yellow Submarine and Eleanor Rigby, they may, the whole album may be new to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like they're hearing new music. They're mm-hmm. hearing a, a new Beatles album. Right. And it's something that we, we will never experience again. But they do. And that's how they, And 50 years later, you know, who's, who's talking about uh, other groups who, who, who weren't around then, you know? Who... I mean, 50 years ago, who was talking about artists from from the 19 from 1914? Right. You know what I mean? The, mm-hmm. you, it, it just fades after time. You get you get you know Bing Crosby and Sinatra and Al Jolson, Elvis. You know, but then you know it's uh, before the rock and roll era. You know that there's very few people who around and and, and there's no 
Perry Como Fest, you know? <laughs> right. Right. And your kids have grown up through through the fest, right, Mark? Yes. Yes, they have. And, and we didn't force it on them. They just really love the music, and they get the vibe, and they're just very, uh, I guess they take after us a bit. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, they have new ideas which direction they want to go with the fest. So, you know, we've been listening and adding things here and there. Michelle will be performing in Chicago. I'm sure in L.A. also with Michelle Mappel. And, uh, I didn't realize, I didn't know it, but she, she can sing. She has a, she has a, a style. And she's, you know, projecting a, a, a personality out there with the style. And, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. And she, wow. She likes it. So, That's fantastic. Ken? Mark, um, what kind of changes do you foresee in the future with fests, with, with the fest? How important? What, I, what I've noticed over the years is that certain um, events like Abbey Road on the River, for example, they're, they're very different from what you do because it's mainly a music festival with a few guests. But do you, do you think that as time goes on that young people will still care as much about the guests the guest speakers, or will it just be mainly about the music? Uh, I guess we'll let the young people speak. I mean, they want a lot of them want to learn about the history. So you learn about the history through the people who were there, and that number unfortunately diminishes right. as time goes on. So I, it's it's not an answerable question yet. Hmm. The answer is if the, my daughters are going to take over eventually at some point when I move to Argentina or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's something that's been under discussion, and they would like to see diff- you know some different directions. Hmm. Um, but keeping the integrity of the show, I mean, it, we're different. We're unique you know, we're for, for the hardcore fans. You know, fans would like to see the music and meet the guests. Right. But you know, the other stuff, you know, it's not as as important. Whereas hardcore fans want to want to hear the authors. They want to speak to them. They want to get the book signed, and they want to you know learn keep learning about different aspects of of uh, the Beatles world. Yeah, well, that's that's the highlights for me, apart from meeting the fans, is just to, to talk to the people who are part of that history from the 60s on up, because their experiences, exactly. and, they're and, priceless, you know. Yeah, and I'm feeling, I feel very fortunate that I, I've, except for Brian, I've met just about every single person involved in the Beatles story. And I'm, I'm very lucky, and I've, and I've been able to bring a lot of those people to the fest so that the fans can meet them too. And I and I, I get a kick out of it. Look, I I'm, I was thrilled. Donovan is I, one of my favorites of all time. Mm-hmm. So to me, it was a no-brainer. How could I not have Donovan, you know? <laughs> so I was thrilled when he first... When he first uh, I met him first back in 89, I invited him. And right. 13 years before we did it. But uh, as he's pointed out on stage... <laughs> But you know, to to meet you know meet Mickey Dolans and Peter you Newman, know, even Mike Pender, I'm looking forward to meeting him. You know, he's a Liverpoolian. Right. There were stories he he comes up with that he hasn't thought of. Yeah, it's how special it was to have Peter and Gordon together when you did. Yes, I would. That's one of my proud, proudest moments to to make that happen. It wasn't easy, but mm-hmm. he did it. And, you know, like with how, having Mal Evans in '75. You know, he, mm-hmm. To one of the greatest guests, and you know, he told me he paid me one of the greatest comments I ever had, ever. He said, "Mark, this is the greatest weekend of my life." And to think all his weekends, I would have traded a hundred of mine for one of his <laughs> in the yeah. mid '60s, right? And here he's had, he, you know, it's like he was the one behind the scenes, except for the hardcore fans, nobody even knew his name. Right, Yet he came to life with the show and. He was finishing his book, and I spoke to him about a week before they assassinated him, I'll call it, in L.A. And uh, he was excited. He wanted to. He wanted to come to all the shows. It's a bad. Hmm. A lot of that. Uh, Mark, do, do you yeah. see any difference with the way kids are are listening to Beatles music? In other words, you know, with with the hardcore fans, you know, they di- dissect the songs, they look for mixes, they look for you know all sorts of uh, you know all sorts of things do you see the, the the younger generation going more for the pure music or are they into the intricacies just as much as the older the older fans are i don't think they're into the intricacies 
nearly as much. I think it's 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 our generation that has that uh, mm. wanting to hear the mono mix of the stereo mono <laughs> upside down version <laughs> recorded at one second longer. <laughs> Look, when I went to Europe with Carol in '76, I must have bought at least 60 singles because every time I saw a different picture sleeve, I had to buy it. And then I listened to every single one, and Hey Jude, the French Hey Jude, I don't know if I, maybe it's never been written, is longer than all the other Hey Jude's ever heard. It's not 7-Eleven, it's like 7, 17 or 16. It, that last verse, go, as it fades out, it's a little bit longer in France. Wow. So there you go, Phil. So, so I, wow, those kind yeah. of things, will, will a kid care about those things? No, I don't think so. It's... I, the music, as as the recorded albums were, were done, that's that's the most important thing. The mono mix is coming out next uh, in September. The only people going to buy that are the hardcore fans, the, the completists. Nobody's going to buy the mono mix. The mono well, I think I, I think some people that I mean the people that already that really care about it got the CDs, and I don't think you know I think the audio files will go after it, but I don't think anybody. I, no, know, I'm I saying don't... right the audio files, but they're not second generation fans. Right. I bet you there's not a one of all the ones we have who people reserved from us. I'll bet you they're all first generation fans. Who's hmm. going to want to spend three hundred seventy five dollars for a box with mono albums in it? Right. They're not the first generation fan. Hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. It, 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 you know, I, uh, your comment about Hey Jude, I can see everybody listening going hunting after that French. Hey Jude now. I have it. There's going to be a, there's gonna be a run on, <laughs> on French Hey Jude. <laughs> Look, the, the, the licensees have made uh, shirts with that image on it. The French Hey Jude. Uh, oh, really? Hmm. I, was, I was buying picture sleeves all over the place. And, uh, and posters, I kept rolling them up. I don't know how I got them back to the United States. It was, I was grossly overweight. <laughs> That happened in six, uh, '76. We didn't have that many in- imports, although we had imports by then. But the singles didn't really make them over here that much hmm. for the albums. So, any more final question before I head out? Again, again, I want to get some. Sorry, I can't. Uh, oh, I know what I can tell you. The story that I told in New York that when I met John Lennon, I told it with all the all the um, all the uh, all the details that that the fans want to hear. And I loved doing it, and I'm going to do it again in Chicago. I'm to, on Friday night, I'm going to, I'm going to tell the story of uh, bells and whistles. That's the one. Tell every okay. detail that only the fans would really want to hear. And I, I was so I was so surprised. People came up to me and said, "Mark, oh, I'm so glad you told that story." And I was like, I was, I was surprised for some reason that that uh, people would want to hear it so to, in that detail, but. I guess I wasn't surprised because that's why I, I did it because I figured people always ask me, how'd you meet John? How did it happen? Yesterday, I somebody was asking me, how did you meet, how'd you do it? What happened? So I have to tell how much of the story do I tell to a casual, casual person? You know, it has to do with a shirt and fate. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know, it's a, one of those stories. All right, can I, can I close with one last question? Okay, Ken. You can <laughs> close with one last question. Steve, you don't get you get bumped out. No, no last question for you. Okay. Ken has it. <laughs> when you were on our show last time, you were talking about you were in L.A. and you met George Harrison during the My Sweet Laura lawsuit. Yes. And you said that you actually spoke to him for half an hour. And a half you, an hour. Yes. A full half hour. It wasn't twenty minutes. It was a half hour. It was during the recess. And what did you guys court. talk about? What did you talk about? We talked about music. We talked about. I invited him to the fest in L.A. It was our first one coming up, and he said, "Oh, I know all about it. I was already planning to send. I have some new promotional films for the album that that we didn't even know was had a name yet. You know, right. it was a few. It was still a, a month away, and he also sent his dark horse, the ceramic dark horse, that was in his <laughs> office. We had to pick it up, and he had that. And I invited him to the show. This is exactly what he said." He said, I'd love to come, but I'm going to be on Paul, with Paul Simon at Thanksgiving and Saturday Night Live. Hmm. That's what he said to me. Yeah. But so he you... would have showed up in that? You never know, but that's what he said. He was on, we know he was on Saturday Night Live that same night. 
mm-hmm. but he did. They never showed true love. So I've never seen it anywhere. So as far as I know, we had the only showing of true love. Maybe you guys can correct that or something. But wow. It was a pro, it was a promotional film, and right afterwards, you know, you, before videotape, so there was no copying going on. And they went right back to his office. Huh. Wow. No, I remember the so two videos. Thing. The two videos they showed. Right. The the right. song and was the cracker box one. True, true yeah. love never showed on TV. I've never seen it anywhere else. I've only seen it that one. That maybe we showed it twice. That's it. It's a sixteen millimeter. Very interesting. All right, Mark. Thanks for joining us here. We know that you're pressed okay, for time. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Steve. Ken, we'll see you somewhere welcome, in the cutting room or whatever New York uh, area. Beetle-related event. Steve, <laughs> look forward to seeing you again in, in L.A. Okay. I look forward to seeing you also. All righty. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Bye-bye. That was great having Mark Lapidos with us on the phone to tell us about the upcoming Chicago Fest. Again, that's August 15th through the 17th at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare. And if you need more information, you can always just go to the Fest Zone website, which happens to be thefest.com. Steve, you wanted to bring up something that you just discovered today, and we're recording this on uh, July 31st. You want to tell the folks yep, about it? Uh, yep. On um, Associated Press came across with their top 20 concert tours from Polestar. Polestar is the the big uh, concert uh, tour organization. And um, number 20, believe it or not, is Ringo Starr and the All-Star Band. Yay. And I think, and I, I, we were talking about this before we went, before we started talking to Mark, and I think both of us were were in shock because number one, Paul is not on the list, but the fact that Ringo made it, um, I mean, that's fantastic. Now wait a second, is this um, is this strictly the U.S.? I'm ge- I'm guessing it is. Let me uh, read the introduction real quick. I believe it is. It doesn't. It, yeah, it says well, it says North America. Okay. So it says the top 20 concert tours ranks artists by average box office growth per city and includes the average ticket price for shows in North America. Well, there you go. Oh, yes. This is is just North America. This makes sense then because Paul didn't start playing in North America this year until July. Right. Right. So he hasn't done enough Um, dates to be anywhere in the list, so... And uh, interestingly enough, like I said, it, it has the average ticket prices, and Ringo's is not the lowest. You know, people like Brad Paisley and Rascal Flatts are down near the bottom with thirty-three dollars. You know, roughly thirty-three dollars, where Ringo's or Ringo's tickets are sixty-five. Mm-hmm. But still, I mean, that's great. That's fantastic that he's that he's done that well. And, well, uh, a lot of it is because he has done a lot of dates. Um, right. Most of the venues that he plays at are roughly, I'd say, three thousand seat venues. So uh, I'm yeah, sure that where I saw him, where, where I saw him was about that. Yeah, it was a, it wasn't a huge venue, but it was, it was a big enough, you know, it was a big enough venue. It, so it's inter- it, it's 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 interesting, and I, I mean, you got to give him credit. I mean, he has been out there touring a lot. So yeah, I I put in, uh, I sent a note off. To his uh, uh, representative to see if we can get a comment back, but I don't think we'll get one before we quit here. But um, that's fantastic. It's really, it really is. So, and don't forget, he's got more dates in the United States in October. Right. He's got. Yeah. He, they're just taking a break for the summer. And uh, speaking of speaking of which, re- reminding me of that, if you have. Direct TV, and I'm not sure how it is on for everybody else, but on Direct TV, if you go to, if you have on demand, Access TV has the Ringo Starr tribute from the El Rey Theater. So um, if you have on demand, you might want to check that out. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, certainly it looks so promising. You've got such an incredible cast of musicians in that concert. You mm-hmm. got. Don was there. Yeah, I I, I started. I watched. I haven't watched the whole thing yet. I watched about half of it, and it's um it's it's really good. Uh, the music is is fantastic. He does have a great house band there with Peter Frampton and Steve Lukather and Kenny Aronoff and right. as I said, Don was. Yeah, it is, you know, it's, it's, it's a fantastic amazing. band. Yeah, that's that's that should be another all star band right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, so that puts a wrap on this show. And uh, again, thanks to Mark Lapidos for joining us to give us a little teaser of what's to come. 
at uh, the Fest in Chicago. Uh, again, that's August 15th through the 17th at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare. So uh, if any of you would like to get in contact with us, we have our own email address. And it's all Steve's fault that it's a very long email address. So blame him if you can. Yeah, things, yeah, yeah. Things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. You can also uh, join us on our own Facebook page, Things We Said Today. And Steve has a whole number of ways that you can get in contact with him, and they are. You can write me at BeatlesExaminer at gmail.com. You can catch me on my uh, Facebook page on my own name. I also have a Beatles Examiner Facebook page. And I actually put up a new Facebook page today called Beatles Finds from Here, There, and Everywhere, where I'd like to where I'd like to hear stories of things you picked up, you know, at thrift stores, at at swap meets, at you know anywhere. Um, so I, I always love stories like that. And uh, you know, if you pick something up uh, recently that you you know that you don't mind talking about, look for it. It's, again, it's called Beatles Finds from Here, There, and Everywhere. So yeah, there we go. It could be the French single of Hey Jude. That's right. There, there <laughs> we go. Here we go. And uh, also, so. if, you, if you can, please uh, look at my website. That's a great idea, by the way, that Facebook page that you came up with. Thank you. Uh, my website is KenMichaelsRadio.com. Lots of interviews on there with people in the Beatle world and uh, trivia every single week with prizes that I give away, too. Again, that's KenMichaelsRadio.com. Okay? So, this has been fun. I'm Ken Michaels for Things We Said Today, thanking all of you for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying, we will see you next time. <laughs>